The revitalization is opportunity, and it's the fact that those buildings can be reimagined by a whole different audience for whole different uses, but it contributes to the vibrancy of downtown. Urban revitalization to the members of our community is basically uh, a way of reinventing ourselves with all of the blight, with all of the, you know, vacant property and abandoned homes, still saying that there's something worth keeping. We're worth investing in. I think uh, downtown Toledo is on the brink of a major urban revitalization with lots of community investment from local partners, regional partners, who are really interested in collaboratively uh, making Toledo, downtown Toledo, an attractive place to, um, to visit and to work and to spend time. It's kind of the only place where anything's really happening. So, I mean, if you go anywhere else, it's just strip malls. And, you know, I mean, so this is quite is, a neighborhood. Yeah. We have neighbors. Our mailman, you know, says hello to my dog who sits out on the sidewalk all day every day. We didn't want to be in a, an industrial park or a strip mall. That just sounds, that's not, that's not us. You, we need stuff to look at, stuff going around, you know, going on around us instead of just looking at traffic, you know. This has got to be one of the more interesting areas in Toledo. Yeah, definitely. Like this, downtown Momi, downtown Perrysburg. But in Toledo, I think this area's really got it. I mean, you know, if you go back, um, say before the Mudhen Stadium was downtown, um, what we found was an exodus of companies out of downtown Toledo leaving. Uh, you had Maumee Arrowhead Park, which was alluring, brand new buildings, free parking, rents about the same as what downtown was charging. And so um, we kind of had this vacuum in downtown Toledo. And uh, you know, from a from a younger person's perspective, I think people would leave away from from home to go to college, and it, it just wasn't hip to come back to Toledo. There was really nothing there for them, and so we've got a big challenge ahead of us to continue the momentum of making it cool to come back to Toledo and be part of this community. almost by default, you know, people are saying, let's make this kind of a cool place to be, you know, let's make it a walking neighborhood. Let's make it, like Uptown is into, let's make it a walking neighborhood. You know, we're into at Neighborhood Health, let's make it a place where people think of first when they want service. You know, we can go right downtown, we can take the bus and we're like right there. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's a cool, cool time to be involved. You think about the corridors, that, the streets that lead into Toledo. Okay, so you you have Monroe Street, you have Door Street, uh, Summit, Broadway, Cherry, all unique areas, um, and they all have something to offer. You know, you know they've all gone. You know, we're not kidding anybody. We all know they've gone through some tough times, and and the, the one the one major thing, and, and that's what I was looking at when you said, okay, how do you re-engage a space? Well, let's take that back a little bit and say. How do neighborhoods get this way? Well, they got this way one house at a time, one street at a time, one block at a time, one neighborhood at a time. How do you get them back? One house, one street, one block, one neighborhood. One of the challenges with urban revitalization is sometimes we can make a lot of really good things happen with um, grants and other sources of funding, and that's wonderful. But if we don't have a way to sustain that long term and truly catalyze that uh, perhaps uh, opportunistic investment at, say, one particular site, if we don't have a way to, to use that momentum and, and revitalize a larger area, sometimes that investment is lost. Urban renewal, some folks call it urban removal from the, from the 60s and 70s, I mean, it had an impact on us. Um, 
because we thought that was the thing to do and create new, yet we pushed out more folks and more jobs than we, we reclaimed. Frankly, the communities that have been successful in redeveloping it haven't just redeveloped the rich parts of their community. They figured out how to engage the poorer parts of the community and retrain people and do all of those things. So it's not just always about bricks and mortar. It's, it's, there's, there's a uh, much bigger formula that it takes to be successful. Because true sustainability is uh, the incorporation of environmental, ecological, and economic sustainability, um, it, true sustainability cannot exist without community involvement. Um, and that means uh, a community that's educated about our resources and the spend of our resources and long-term um, sustainability from, a, from the planet's perspective and also economic. I think when we look at urban revitalization, it says, well, it's been done before. What makes this any different? What makes this a big a moment of aha? It's the fact that there is, it started from the grassroots. We're not waiting for Superman. We are Superman. We are our own heroes. The moment that we invest in ourselves, then others will invest in us. Things are always slower in Toledo, and we adopt that Midwest culture, and when people say that we're slower here, we try to make sure that we prove it to them. Most of the buildings that are empty, I think, they, they've been sat on. people sitting on it for so long that they're trashed. That's they the didn't, problem. They didn't want to fix the roof because they're just sitting on it. So it's just been leaking for decades, and now everything's trashed. Like, we, we've looked through a lot of buildings downtown for opportunities, of, you know, to, just, just for whatever, like, just for Most dreams. of them you can dig into. Like, yeah, you can they're, <laughs> dig into from the outside. That's how bad they are. So now they it's almost like people sat on it for too long. So I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know what to do. I don't know. I don't know what do you do with that. Tax, tax breaks, but you know, I don't know. People are just holding out, waiting for this opportunity. Now, now they think they're closer than ever, yeah. so they're gripping so they're even holding tighter. Even, yeah, they're still holding on. Yeah, everyone's waiting for the magical day when someone just comes through and offers a million dollars for their building. It does suck, though, because then that makes you have to rely on places like ProMedica. I, I think the biggest problem with other people's businesses is that they really expect a lot of financial aid from the city and that's what really gets held up like I haven't I've seen a few people get caught up in some of the bureaucracy for signage and for other aspects but it's been my experience that the city is falling over themselves to try to accommodate new businesses downtown and in the county too um, but these bigger companies that are asking for large tax breaks and for like ProMedica they're asking for all this all, all the stuff to be given over to them, all this, you know, land and property. And, you know, those types of deals take a lot of time because, you know, the city has to basically sign off on a tremendous amount of money in order to bring them downtown. And the presence of, you know, two or th 2,000 new people downtown is very appetizing to the city, but we don't really know at what cost it will be. A lot of people with vision, and the people with the visions they're the ones making things happen. It's like, because they see something, somebody else might look at a, at a piece of property and go, gosh, I can't do anything with that. What am, what am I gonna do with that piece? There's no way. Then there's someone with vision goes, you know what I'm gonna do with this? I'm gonna make it a microbrewery. I'm gonna make it a small business. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live there. I'm gonna live there on the, you know, on the, on the second floor and have my coffee shop. And that, and that's happening. It's, you know, and I'm not knocking the big businesses because it, 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 it's great. You know, the, the Jeeps, the Chryslers, uh, the ProMedicas, the, the Mercies, uh, that, that's fantastic. But what you want is give me a thousand small businesses to help recreate an area in a neighborhood because that's, that's the impact they have. What you'd have to do almost is convince several people to open up a couple different things simultaneously, like maybe a restaurant, a bar, a coffee shop bar, and a, another s store, but right all together and then they become a little area. I, I think other other concerns I've had from clients that are um, have businesses downtown is they're concerned about you know the aesthetics of downtown. Right now, the aesthetics are are really bad in, in places. You know, with the sidewalks being torn up in places, 
people on, like um, l loitering, um, some of the, 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 the signage that's downtown, and, and abandoned buildings and where the sidewalks are torn up. And that really, I think, takes away from people's ability to invest in downtown just now. I mean, coming from a non-Toledo and, you know, who fell in love with Toledo and the people here, that's why I'm still here, it's sad to see so many abandoned spaces and, but beautiful architecture. And you, you, you walk around or drive around, and, you know, I have guests coming from New York or friends and family coming from New York, and it's like, what can we do? Um, and, you know, it's just, it's sad, and I, I hope people, I'm always telling chef friends to come downtown, let's do something small, like what I'm doing here, and, um, be passionate about it. Um, yeah, but, I mean, it'd be, uh, I think I get a good vibe, and I, it, it seems like it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I just I just hope it does get better, and that's that's what I'm that's why we're here. Right now, it seems to me that the city is like a desperate person trying to establish any kind of relationship they can, basically giving themselves totally over without. Ex ex having any real expectations for how it's going to affect the city in the future. And I like the idea of Prometica being downtown. I like the idea of the Marina District being built up, but I think that you have to um, be very careful what you're giving away and, and make sure that um, there's a, a fair trade that's taking place. You know, a bunch of jobs for that are just being relocated from other places in Toledo to be downtown doesn't necessarily help the city out that much, you know, and I don't really know how the calculus of that is going to work, but I do know that you don't want to sell a city short just because you're going through what appears to be an extended recession. We got rezoned, you know, we went through the red tape. We actually got, we, we were just doing this on our own, and then uh, I pulled, one day I pulled off all the, uh, well, it was more like that, the window covers, so we could have some natural light. And then we kind of were getting harassed by, uh, downtown workers like you guys have to have permits for this I'm like I'm just pulling these panels off man and then and then like the downtown building inspectors kind of got a hold of us and they came in like what is going on here there's a city paper article about us then we got shut down and then we got sort of forced to go through the, the red tape way but we were kind of naive you know we didn't really know what we were doing but I guess there is like a program out there for small companies now I, I hope it's still there I remember yeah. they were talking about starting it where they will actually uh, help out small businesses and help them know what to do so that they don't run into the same problems that we did. Kind of based off of what we went through, because we were really frustrated for a while. Yeah. And we made it very apparent, you know, we were being very vocal yeah. about it. The, the problem is, is the government assumes that you know all of the rules, and they don't tell anyone the rules. Like, you, you have to find out by them Trial and error. slapping fines yeah. on you. That's when you find out that you broke a rule. They don't, you know, there's nowhere you can go. There's not a website you can go to. Well, and I'm sure like, there oh, is. But... I doubt it. Where you can say, I, I want to make this know. building better and start this business. I guarantee you they don't have a website. There's no way. Well, there's a program and, now, I swear. Well, maybe the program is doing it. I'm just saying the government doesn't have that. But basically, the government just needs to get out of the way and just either help people or just leave them alone. Yeah, actually, we've been downtown since 1965 and we were previously in the Ohio building in the center part of downtown uh, and we decided that we wanted to own our own building and that was challenging just to find you know the right building right location and then also taking into consideration parking actually Toledoans hate paying two things they hate paying tolls on the turnpike and they hate paying for parking downtown I mean Toledo you know is definitely a, a strong suburb community you know coming downtown you know, parking is was everybody's first thing when we came down here. Everybody's like, what are you going to do about parking? And it's like, well, we want people, it's downtown, you know, people have to get used to parking and walking a block or two, you know? The parking enforcement is pretty severe, and given that we don't have a, a large population downtown, it's, it's very off-putting for a lot of people. Um, I love uh, being downtown. It's so easy to get to and from downtown. It's easy for our employees who, you know, come and go uh, a lot. 
and then also getting around downtown and finding parking is generally fairly easy unless there's a special event. But when there's a special event, that's exciting. And you know, most people, you know, when I go to a, a bigger city or a smaller city, I like to, I enjoy walking a few blocks. And you know, the cliche that I hear, which I'm finding to be very true, it's not that there's a parking problem, it's that, that maybe there's a, Toledo has a walking problem. It's, it's a mentality we've have here is we really don't have a parking problem, we got a walking problem. So four years ago when we opened, I would say there were some obstacles of kind of moving a business downtown or starting a business. And it seemed to be mostly based on parking and um, people didn't perceive downtown as safe. But I would very clearly say that four years later, those aren't obstacles anymore. I think the naysayers are one of the biggest challenges. Um, we hurt ourselves when we say, I think I can't, I think I can't. And um, when we look around and can't reimagine the blight or the disinvestment and reimagine it as something that can be better than it ever was. Um, I think that hurts us um, immeasurably. But when we have the ability to see beauty in decay and to see the ability to uh, work collaboratively to transform the spaces that we um, are living and working in, then I think we do ourselves a big favor. No one has a problem with coming downtown. People are excited and engaged and willing to move downtown. There's so many more businesses. We have a lot more street visibility. Uh, and everyone knows that it's absolutely safe to come downtown. So I would say all of our things that used to be liabilities, you know, our unique location, um, kind of like an older building and that neighborhood's character, all those things that people used to be afraid of are now actually assets. There's the naysayers. We know, we know they're out there and it's kind of a, at times it's a little mentality, but then there's also the folks who are saying, you know what, I'm gonna hang out with people with positive attitudes, or know that we can make a change, know we can make a difference, and this is what we're gonna do. And when you look at the catalyst of anything it means where it starts. Where does it start? It starts at home. Where's our homes? In the community. That's the difference. It has to belong to the individuals who live here. Since I've been here uh, 20 plus years, I've seen neighborhoods in downtown and, and how it was, and it's, it's come leaps and bounds from what it was before to now. And today it's, it is, uh, it still has a ways to go, but boy, you look back 15 years ago and it's, it's made quite a difference because you didn't see the, the, the folks coming down here. You didn't see the restaurants coming in here. Uh, you didn't see the interest in, in, in this area. I mean, uh, with ProMedica coming down here, uh, with other smaller development, because you, you can walk in or walk around downtown and it's not so much the, the uh, bigger residential facilities, but you look at those smaller buildings, those two, two three story buildings where you'll see uh, a storefront and then look above and you'll see the TV going and you can see the, the couches and somebody lives up there. One of the things I love about this particular location in the warehouse district is it really is a neighborhood feel. Most people are shocked when I tell them that there are 22 restaurants and bars that I can walk to. You know, the great thing about being able to walk to a place like ours or any of the development downtown is, is that it creates a different kind of bond than um, driving your car. I know that, that might sound a little strange, but if you can walk to the corner store, you have a different kind of connection to that corner store. It, you, it, you feel like it's part of your neighborhood, and that's what we want this site, our site to be. We want it, we designed it so that it would be part of the neighborhood. Operating a business downtown helps to create a sustainable neighborhood and a community in several different ways. Number one, I employ people. All my employees live within a five minute drive of the store. I'm creating jobs, I'm creating a tax base, I'm paying sales taxes. So I'm definitely contributing economically to the area. And on the other hand, what we're doing is we host classes, we host events, we bring people to downtown, we drive people downtown, we get, we draw a crowd. Our customers, after they spend money at my store and they contribute to the financial stability of the neighborhood, then they go to a business next door, they might have lunch, they might go to a bar and have a drink, they're gonna go to Mud Hen's game. We both love uh, downtown atmospheres. 
you know, we definitely didn't want to be in a strip mall. I mean, that was something that we definitely didn't want to do. We wanted, you know, wood, wood floors and brick walls and, you know, and things like that. Um, you know, it's what we love, it's what we want to do. And downtown was perfect, you know. Downtown is still that place where you can find affordable things, you know. Some, you know, of course, the things that you want are way too expensive, and there's nothing you can do about that. But there are, if you do your homework, you really can find really good things down here that are affordable and people that will work with you. And that's why we are down here. I, I'm from Cleveland originally, and I moved here back in 1999, and I just love it here. I love all the people. I, I love the fact that there's not a, a fight for resources like there is in other cities. Like, big cities like Chicago or New York, they, you know, they, they're nice in their own way, but everyone's fighting for resources. That You know, the living accommodations are so small, you know, or they're so expensive. There's lines everywhere. Um, there's traffic everywhere. But in Toledo, you can pretty much come and go as you please. Um, there's lots of things to do. We have all the resources you could ever want, and it's, it's a very well-kept secret. So I think people that decide to relocate their businesses to Toledo in the next you know, 10 years will really benefit from that, getting in now before um, word gets out about how great it is here. And then what will happen is we will start having to fight for resources again. We are now on the rebound and we are seeing a number of people that are want to come downtown and go through what everyone else is calling the reurbanization. You have all the art, you have all of the, the, the energy on Adams Street, you have the energy on St. Clair Street, and we're drawing people down here. And the people are being pulled downtown from the first steps that were taken to establish what I would call our major bricks in the downtown area. Fifth Third Field, the arena, those were built around the Seagate Center, our convention center. We have an expanded library. We've got the Ballantyne Theater that's been completely renovated. We continue to capitalize on those bricks that are downtown. And then we're now in the phase of creating the mortar to really put together the urban fabric that we need downtown. If the community is not informed and not on board, and if the community has not agreed to, as one of my favorite um, masters of urban revitalization, Tom Murphy, who's with the Urban Land Institute, former mayor of Pittsburgh, likes to say, uh, we can't be an it'll do city. And if the community decides that they're going to be an it'll do city and that second rate is okay or looking like generica, looking like any other community is okay, um, then you're going to be left with an it'll do city. But if you decide that, no, we're, we're better than that, we're first rate, and this is what we choose, this is the character we choose to have, and this is how we're going to survive long term, um, it makes for an entirely different community.